What's up guys, Jacob here. Today I'm gonna to give you some tips on how to make your strings sound more realistic. Maybe you're scoring a film or a video game, or maybe you just got a composition and you'd like to make a really nice recording of it. These are some tips and things to think about that will certainly help you get closer to a more realistic performance of your piece. My first tip, tip number one, is to listen to real strings, acoustic strings. Now we've all heard this in film music, video games, any kinds of scores like that, but I want you to take it a step further. Go online, go to YouTube, search for string players, find a really accomplished say violin player, maybe just performing, maybe doing a lesson on their instrument. Pretend you're a beginner string student, you want to learn violin, and watch this experienced teacher go through the different articulations, bowings, learn about spiccato, staccato, marcato, legato, all the autos, as you could say. And I'm not saying you need to have some college education or some equivalent of a degree in composition to be able to start writing for strings. There are a lot of composers out there that are true professionals working at the top of their game in the industry on big projects that didn't have that traditional education. Many of them do, but some of them don't. They definitely all have a deep, deep understanding of what strings are supposed to sound like. They also have a really good concept of the basics. So articulations, the physical limits for a player, they are aware of a lot of those things. So I encourage you to go out there and do some self-learning and I promise you, no matter what you pick up, even if it's just a little bit of basic general knowledge, it's gonna make you better at writing for strings, I promise. Tip number two, get a great string software library. There's no way around this, invest in a really nice sounding library. Sweetwater has a lot of great options for string libraries. I like using VSL, the Vienna Symphonic Library. Great sounding professional line library. There's also a lot of great stuff in the contact line of instruments. So the complete bundle, which is native instruments, NI. One I'm using right here is Session Strings Pro. Here's um, a violin solo. Now, I really like this one. I'm going to talk about it more later. There's these new instruments from Contact, Stradivari, violin, and cello. There's a violin and cello one. Here's a little bit of the violin. Legato cellos from VSL. Now you might be wondering, how do I pick a string library and do I need one of these? Do I need a really high-end professional one just to be able to write for strings at all? No, you'll be surprised just how many great libraries there are out there that are affordable. So I would definitely encourage you to try to balance price and sound quality and find something that's right for you. The next tip, tip number three, is to use articulations and to get to know your articulations. So we talked about this in the beginning. It's part of doing research on the acoustic instruments that you're writing for with software. Now legato is a really important one. I'm actually gonna stop and talk about that one for a bit. When something is played legato on an instrument, Basically, it's all connected. So at the end of every note, when a note stops, the next one begins. There's no gaps in between. It's just all very fluid and connected together. Now, when you use a sustain patch in strings, which is very common, it's just called sustain, you don't hear the nuances of a legato type of articulation. <laughs> It sounds very synthetic. It sounds like a synthesizer. It's kind of like the sustain at the end of a note being held on a string instrument is just coming out. So these are cellos, so it just kind of sounds like the sustain of a cello. 
Like, almost like the envelope is off, right? Now watch when I change it to legato and I play that same little figure. Let's just do that one more time. Now the same thing, legato. Gosh, that legato, especially when you're doing something like this, which is either a solo instrument playing a single melodic line as a solo or an entire section. In this case, we have cellos playing. It makes such a difference. It's so huge. So that's why you need to get to know all the articulations. So if I just go through and manually switch through, here's tremolo. You've heard that before. You can do a trill different types of trills, different notes were being trilled there. Here's a different kind of staccato. Then you have detaché, detached. We have staccato long. Again, there are so many different variations and I'm actually always very surprised at how many articulations are available in plugins like this nowadays. I mean, they, they go through some really extended things too, like bouncing the string on the bow or hitting it with the back of the bow or slapping the strings. I mean, you'll be surprised even how many kind of special techniques like that are included in these plugins. Tip number four is to use key switches. Now, what are key switches? They allow you to switch between different articulations during a performance. So as you go to record a part, you will play the key switches, or if it's something like a pitch wheel or modulation or a fader, and it will go between those articulations and record as automated MIDI data along with the notes that you play. So you never hear a string performance or a string player just play a piece using one articulation. They're going back and forth between short and long notes, different types of techniques, using the bow, they might use pizzicato and pluck the strings and get that kind of sound. You want to have that same kind of control over the sound as you go. For instance, So that was, you know, a little bit clunky. That's probably not a performance I would necessarily use, but that's just something I went with just to show you how quickly you can go back and forth. It becomes really useful whenever you're doing something that's legato that you want to be sustained and you want to switch to something that's shorter, right? So I could do that easily with this violin that I have here, the Stradivari violin. When it's on Virtuoso, see these are all the different key switches and articulations for this plugin. When it's on Virtuoso, it's legato. But if I change the pitch wheel and I go down, now I have this. So I could play a figure like this. Tip number five, or really I could just say thought number five, or idea number five, is the idea of using sustain or writing out parts. It's very common when composing to just pull up a basic string patch whenever you're writing, something like this. And that's a great way to start working out ideas and chord progressions and things like that. But when you get towards the end, this is where I will encourage you to bring a lot of this stuff together 
and challenge yourself to write out for each section, violins, violas, cellos, and basses, violins one and two. So really you have four completely different instruments that have their own timbre, their own colors, um, their own ranges. They have what you might call standards for writing, how to write for those different instruments. Each individual section has its own part that comes together to make an arrangement. This brings me to the next point of that, which is writing out parts. Now you have to be comfortable to take, say, chords like that. And figure out each voice and write it out for each section so that together it will make that chord. Now that's, for most people, would consider that some pretty high kind of lofty compositional knowledge and skills to be able to do that. It's just something that will make it sound better. It's a suggestion. I'm going to play something a little bit later where I didn't take the time to write it all out. I did the same thing. I just actually I read from a piano score and just played a two staffed piano part on this string sound. And then I added the Stradivari violin on top of those sustained strings and it sounded really nice. It sounded really nice. Tip number six is a big one. It's a very important one and I've kind of lumped a lot of things together, but they're all really important. The three things we're gonna talk about are dynamics, expression, and reverb. So what are dynamics? Well, let's look at this violin here. You might have noticed during this video so far, I've been messing with these faders on my Personas Fader Port 8 over here. I currently have it in MIDI mode, so that I am sending MIDI CC to Ableton, and I can make any of these faders map to anything I want. I could make them change articulations, I can make them change dynamics or expression. Right now I have this first fader set to control dynamics. It's not necessarily just like automating volume up and down. It's actually changing the sample because when they make these libraries they have a real player sit in front of a mic, several mics, in this case several because they have several different miking simulations within the mixer, so close mic, mid mic, and then far away. So they take a string player, put him or her in a room, I'm assuming there was one violinist that was used for Stradivari violin, and they have them play several different articulations and volumes so that they can map each one of those to each individual note. So when I'm changing dynamics, what you're hearing is not just the same one recorded sample of violin, one note just going up in volume, we're actually shifting between different layers. Each note might have at least two, maybe three or four different layers, different audio samples per note. So you can hear that here. The other thing that I'm controlling with the fader next to that is vibrato, which I really like about this plugin that it's so accessible because it's a solo instrument, it makes a lot of sense to have that control. Can get some really nice effects when you use the both of them together like you can change the dynamics and the vibrato together so you can get a swell on a note maybe you hold it out with no vibrato and then you start getting a little shake so something like this so you heard how it got more passionate actually you can hear another thing you can hear uh, the re-bowing. So when you hold a note for a long time, a string player eventually is going to get to the end of that bow and they have to change directions. So check this out. That's another realistic thing. You can actually make the bow change like that with a MIDI note. Check it out. So if you have a repeated note, you could just, but it's even better really for a lot of situations if you do that re-bowing, because then it sounds like the violin player is playing a repeated note, same fingering, same string, and just changing the bow to get a new sound. So you might notice in Vienna, instead of having dynamics, I have this thing called velocity crossfade that I'm using, and I have that set to one of the faders.
Now, just to explain a little bit about that, just like how the dynamic setting was allowing me to change through samples, Vienna is automatically set, and a lot of plugins are, to do that with velocity. So if I play softly and I have velocity crossfade off, if I play softly on the keyboard, it triggers a soft sound. If I go louder, it's louder and then louder still. So you're hearing, as we were discussing before, those different levels of sample per note. And, you know, that can be okay, especially if you're just trying to get something out quickly. And if you're a keyboardist and you're already used to accenting and playing notes softer or quieter, you might like that. But I think when it comes to realism, it makes a lot more sense for the dynamics to be more fluid. Um, and to control that and make it fluid, it's good to have it automated as like a fader. So with velocity cross fade on, I'm shifting between those different sounds with the faders. So check it out. Now this is different from expression. So if I just, actually if I turn velocity cross fade off, listen to this. I'm going to play as hard as I can. So all that's doing is it's the same sample. So the sound, the recorded sample is not changing. All I'm doing basically is just turning the volume of that audio file up and down. But if I turn on velocity crossfade, now I'm actually changing between audio samples. So now I'm actually not controlling velocity at all. So that's all being controlled by this fader. So if I play hard or soft, I'm getting the same sound because velocity is now being controlled by a fader instead. It's great to have that amount of expressive control over the instrument. And you can play with it. You can use this velocity crossfade or dynamics with expression because sometimes you may want to actually essentially automate the volume of something. Sometimes it sounds nice to drop the expression a little bit right before an end of a note or to let something kind of, you know, disappear like a long note that just kind of like disappears and dies slowly. That sounds very good. Um, but you got to play with that to figure out what works. Before I do one final performance and put all these things together, I want to talk about reverb. Now, reverb is kind of one of those things that everybody's like, duh, you need reverb. But when it comes to strings, I know I had a bit of an epiphany when I started using reverb on strings and also tried to make it sound as if it were in a studio and you can really hear that space after each note. Boy, did it start to get way more realistic. So let's go to... Uh, legato sound. So it sounds good, right? But it's very dry. So listen to the end of the note. It cuts off really quickly, but if I go in here to advanced and I just turn the Murex reverb on, which is just kind of a natural automatic setting, check out the difference. You hear the tail of that, how you can hear the notes still reverberating in that space, in that virtual space, that adds so much. But you could take it a step further. There's another program made by Vienna, which is Mir Pro. Now I did a video on Mir Pro, so I would encourage you to check that out. It's in the description below. But Mir Pro, basically what it lets you do is look at a simulated studio space. Maybe it's not even a studio, maybe it's a, a church. There are churches, cathedrals, uh, film score studios that are all modeled in this software. And if you're doing strings, it'll let you take each string section and arrange it around microphones. You can put different microphones in the room and get the sound of a string orchestra in a studio. Um, obviously, nothing beats going to a real studio and having real players play your music, but I mean, you know what? 
it sounds pretty darn good. I incorporated it into my workflow and I'll definitely always use it, especially when I'm trying to mix uh, instruments and not just Vienna instruments because you can put any sound, any sound source from your DAW into the virtual space. So now I'm going to play you an excerpt from one of my favorite John Williams scores and I'm going to use the Stradivari violin to play the melody part. I'm going to do some live manipulation of this sound using the dynamics and vibrato which I showed you over here and you'll also hear me do the velocity change to be able to get portamento. So if I play a note and then play the next note and play over the threshold that I've set, which in this case is 104, a velocity of 104, it will trigger portamento. So let me show you that real quick. Difference being this, just straight legato or portamento. It really adds a lot, so check this out. Alright, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this one and go to Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.